United States of Europe making fun of the EU the American way. A new audit by Ernst & Young Accounting estimates that 7,000 jobs and 1 trillion pounds of assets moved out of the UK because of Brexit. That's nothing, said the US Pentagon. We've lost 21 trillion. <laughs> no idea where it went. Of course, most of that 21 trillion must have been spent on the very expensive time machine necessary to go back and build airports during the Revolutionary War, as made famous by the phrase, British Airways are coming, British Airways are coming. Meanwhile, in a major policy shift, Jeremy Corbyn announced that the British Labour Party will now back remaining in the EU if a new Brexit referendum were to be held. To appease the Labour Party members who still want to leave the EU, Corbyn also said that the Holocaust never happened. And now it's time for my favorite top 10 Brexit jokes from around the internet, starting with number 10. Boris Johnson insisting the UK will be okay because it's the UK is like jumping out of an airplane refusing a parachute because I've got a flag. Number 9. An Englishman, a Scotsman, and an Irishman walk into a bar. The Englishman wanted to go, so they all had to leave. The joke is that Britain is so myopic, even the writer of this joke thinks the Republic of Ireland is basically the same as Northern Ireland. At number 8, maybe out of frustration that nationalists failed to join forces in the European Parliament, MEPs of the Brexit Party turned their backs during the European anthem, or has the entire Brexit Party been put on the naughty step already? Soon right-wing crackpots will become the number one British export. At number seven, here's a quick guide to all the original entrants in the Conservative Party leadership race. And at number six, once they eliminated all the women, they had to have a proper TV debate. This fellow wrote a TV preview for The Guardian and summed it up thusly. That the UK is bound for hell in a hand-assisted vehicle, there is little doubt. All that remains is to discover which of these escapees from Pandora's box will taxi us there. A more wretched collection of dissemblers, idiots, narcissists, and people who have mistakenly taken drugs is difficult to imagine under one studio roof, but here we are. Or the review of the TV debate, the horrifying truth that one of these men will be the next Prime Minister. At number five, now I know everyone hates the EU because it's so undemocratic but the UK's next Prime Minister will be chosen by whom exactly? Yes, 0.3% of the population. Or as Martin Moore puts it, Think of all the outrageous comments that you've heard Tories say over the years, racist, homophobic, elitist things, and they are the ones who are allowed to speak in public. Now just imagine what's being said behind closed doors. Just imagine what those Tories are like. They are the people who will be deciding who becomes our next Prime Minister. And four, well at least they eliminated Dominic Raab, hence shock as former Brexit secretary who failed to deliver Brexit, not trusted to deliver Brexit. And now it's down to the final two, Jeremy Hunt and Boris Johnson. Three. Boris is front-runner despite neighbors calling the police over a recent yelling match with his girlfriend, or Boris refuses to accept his girlfriend telling him leave means leave. At number two, as the protest sign says, we don't want a piss-haired, yellow-bellied, orange-faced, tiny-handed, pussy-grabbing, kid-stealing, golf-cheating, lie-telling buffoon, we've already got Boris Johnson. But then the mural says this, and... Boris's new haircut is not a good sign. And at number one, Boris made some claims during the campaign that weren't altogether true, but he promised Brexit, and he will deliver. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you want to support A Daily Show for Europe, then please subscribe. It really helps. Uh...